activation code required. Access granted. Warning. Evacuation sequence activated. We're back. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the S4 Paranormal Bunker with your host Eric Cole and Kayla. Friend, we've got Rosella, we've got uh, Rick, and we've got John on with us. May, Nikki might join us later, but we're not sure. Um, we are coming from you to you live from the Cascade Mountains for this special Halloween, where we are going to talk about monsters within the pop culture realm. So, welcome everybody. Woohoo! Yeah. Uh, that was a lot worse intro than I wanted to do, but hey, friend, it's been two <laughs> weeks. Leave me the fuck alone. Jesus Christ. <laughs> for no shit, huh? Shut up, John. What God. Did, what did I say? What? Well, exactly. You he was asleep. Where were you? Yeah, I. <laughs> You've taken a nap. Yeah. I was for just, the last, like, <laughs> six months. I was hibernating, okay? <laughs> <clears throat> I need to do it to keep my power. Hibernate. You're doing it. It's 52 degrees out. It's fucking warm. Yeah. So how, can, need... how can you hibernate? Easy. What? <laughs> you just say it's 52 degrees out. It's warm? Yeah. Comparatively. Yeah. I have seen you shiver at 70 degrees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Friend. Yeah, but it's very easy. You just go to bed and sleep. Yeah? Yeah. Is that how you do that? Teenage boys, all they do is sleep, eat, and see what other thing. See what that is here. I, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> and look for monsters. You mean touch yes. themselves? Looking for monsters. <laughs> Every teenage boy I've ever talked to has said they don't do that. What, look for monsters? Yeah, <laughs> under the covers. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wasn't gonna go in there, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, what the hell? Is you that? always have to knock on your kid's door before you walk in, or you might get fucking embarrassed. What's um, that? Land of Gorsh. Yeah. Even at the age What's of eleven. Land? What is land? That's not right. It's oh, the land God. of Gorsh. Oh. Jeez. Oh, so what is your favorite Halloween monster? Who wants to start? I think I Slimer. Know. And, like, yeah, I go to Ghostbusters. My mom. Okay. okay. Uh, well, like, Slimer well, and Marshmallow Man are so epic. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Uh, Paula says, uh, in her opinion, as a mom of three sons, I feel like teen boys should be considered classic monsters. Ah, yeah. Well, <laughs> hey. Uh, I, I'm... Yeah. yeah. I'm more of the opinion that they're demonic. Hey. Um, <laughs> well, a demon's a monster. Eh. Uh, in, in some circles. In some circles. Um, <laughs> okay. What? From age 2 to th 12, they're monsters. Oh. Then the devil takes over. Hey. I, I, I'm sure, daughters, because sure. my daughter's worse than my son. Ew, God, God. Uh, yeah, okay. So is mine. That's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> like, so drama and, and very mean to my son. So da like, da daughters are not... The bully. 
daughters are not demons. They are straight up the devil. Incarnate. Yeah, it was awful. So, uh, yeah, there, there's no other way to put that. No, there isn't. She's evil. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, so, well, what is everything else's? On the, well, real quick, on the topic of Halloween, uh, so I, I track religious issues that go on in, in today's current environment. And there was a commander, I'm going to assume he's probably a colonel, because it seemed like it was a battalion that was having an issue. So there was a lower ranking officer that that was tasked back in July with having putting this whole wee party together for the, the unit. And his colonel came out uh, recently, I think this week, and said uh, there's not going to be a Halloween party because uh, it, it honors the devil. Okay. okay. And yeah. that went to the MRFF, and the MRFF called him up and said, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> that goes against freedom of religion, that goes against the First Amendment, you can't do that. So he rescinded it. But then he put out a stipulation that, okay, okay, okay. So we'll have a Halloween party, but nobody can have a demon costume or a Satan costume or a witch costume. Uh, and so, uh, again, they called the MRFF, and, and I could call them up to, uh, dude, really? I would the witch costume I agree with. What? Yeah. Oh, hell no. Yeah. No. Why? Which is a part of Halloween? Okay, but it's okay to like it's okay to say you can't appropriate other cultures, but pagan one, pagan cultures are okay to appropriate. Yes, this is America. Wow. <laughs> this is America. Okay, we learn from no, Donald. Like, which is a part of Halloween? So why not? Which is so were cowboys and Indians for the longest time? <laughs> Honestly, my like there's churches <laughs> I live that will not hey, let you. That. You can't have like a haunted outfit kind of to them. No. No ghouls, no monsters, no witches, none of it. And at yeah. schools, which I disagree. I would instantly put on a demon we costume. We should go back I mean, to the 1920s, because I'm telling you that those were the scariest Halloween outfits. What, the ever. doctor and the fireman? No, like the 1920s, <laughs> when they had like a sack over their head, and it was just creepy as Where you shit. pick the drum oh, yeah, uncle, yeah, yeah. and he I makes the Halloween that. costume. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I and guarantee that's like how they did it. Some kind of fucking scary ass scarecrow. Yeah. No. Yeah. no. Those were fucking terrifying. Does that happen? I would just dress up as a demon and slash the tires. What? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I only heard Freaking half of that, <laughs> and now I'm worried for my tires. Don't worry. You need to slash tires. Is that what you said? What happened to toilet papering houses? What yeah. the fuck? Uh, that's old school. Now we. Now you, you cause, just go slash uh, yeah. tires. <laughs> now you cause actual damage, break windows, and slash yeah. tires. Huh? This is why I'm making you go trick or treating again. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know what? Yeah. Creepy, uh, scare, be skeleton. Friend, I like. It's always an argument. Every what? year, I see the argument all over social media. What's that? How old is too old to trick or treat? Past the age of twelve. Uh, no, Rick. Uh, no. Dead. Dead. Once you're dead, you gotta stop. Yep. Frank, because they can't give <laughs> you the treat. I'm a 13 year old, and I just am like, should you really go this year? Absolutely. Because, I don't know. I feel like it's more drama for them as they get older. But yeah, but when they're old, younger, it's fun, more fun. Think of what the alternatives are. So they go out. They start like there's there's drugs. There's drinking. There's all kinds of things they could be getting into instead. Oh no, absolutely, absolutely. But and you know, Halloween uh, culturally has gone from kids trick or treating in the 1920s, 1930s, to now it's almost more adult like with adult haunted houses and yeah. Drinking parties and Spooky. I, I mean it, it's cut away. Uh, yeah. you, you know we're not going to go into the history or nothing, but it's gone away from the actual meaning of what Samhain is, <laughs> and it never was for the public. I mean to be honest with you, most public 
don't even they, they associate it with the devil and it's got nothing to do with the devil absolutely nothing to do with a Satan or a devil because back then there was no Satan or devil with Sally oh, yeah. it's not a part of our culture um, so you know I have more respect for churches that put on a harvest party than I do for the ones that just sit there and say no to say Kennedy holiday blah 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 um and don't you do anything? Right. Well, well, no, because if they don't do anything, that could be a cultural choice too. It could be. Yeah. It could for be. An, uh, I'm okay with that. Don't when do anything at all. I guess my yeah. point is when somebody tells other people that you can't do this because it's against my belief, like in the case of this colonel, you know, uh, that wasn't okay. He got shut down really quick. Mm -hmm. So now they're kind of waiting for her to see what he does at Christmas time. Make everybody go to his church. I mean, and, and honestly, that's not pretty me. much what this country's based on. So, yeah, is you can't do this because it's not what because we I said so, and I'm a cupcake. That's puritanical, though. But it's what America is based on. Yeah, whether they want, like, they, anyone wants to believe it or not, mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. so, like yeah, land of the free. As long as you believe what we believe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For, I got you. Um, it's always been that way. Mm -hmm. For and, and the thing is, at that point, it is not a religious thing. It's a political thing. Mm -hmm. Well, so look at the last ten years. Yeah. You know, they're going to get worse. So, but I don't really feel like looking at the last ten years. At least the last three, maybe four, been kind of shit. What do you mean? Explain. Uh, okay, twenty twenty three has been a little rough. Twenty eighteen, not bad. Twenty seventeen, not bad. Okay. So, like, that's the last three years. What are you talking about? Wait, twenty seventeen. Wait, twenty seventeen, twenty eighteen, twenty twenty three. Those are the yeah. last three years. 21, 20... <laughs> Shut up, those didn't exist. Exactly. <laughs> okay, but I have a question for all of you. Since it's almost spooky season, well, it is. What is your favorite Halloween candy? Like it's kind of Milky Way. Coffee Crisp. Always. Hmm? Candy Corn. Fred, yeah, you're um, weird. Oh, God. Like candy. No. Hey. Oh, it, it, candy it, Corn is old school. It is the best candy, Okay. Can, no. It's often no. Like, I can sit there and eat, like, ten bags and... It is not the best candy. Yes, it is. Let's not go there. Let's go it's there. It's the best. Friend. It was in the 1920s, not today. Friend. <laughs> no. <laughs> I disagree with that comment, too. Really? Friend. Yeah. Rock candy. Rock candy sucks. Uh -huh. You suck. <laughs> Rock candy. You're talking no. about the sticks? Yeah. yeah. That was what if you guys ever have one of those dreams easily. where you're biting into those rock candy things and your teeth break? Yeah. No. no. It freaks me out, and that's a common dream. Friend. Okay, uh, whoa. whoa, whoa. A common fear. Candy corn and rock candy can go suck it. I want a wacky cake. If we're going all the way back to the 1920s. Yeah, my favorites were lemon drops growing whoa. up. Whoa. First of all, wacky cake did not exist until 1934. Oh, my God. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, let's not, <laughs> let, let, let's not mince words here. Okay. Friend, wacky cake was invented because of the Great Depression. Let's go. Yeah, in the 1920s. No, let's see. The uh, the the rock candy actually was around the 1800s because. Wait, was Grandma alive in the Great Depression? My grandmother was Which one? alive in the Great Depression. Your grandmother? Your grandmother yeah. was not. Which one? <laughs> oh, I think, no, because Grandma. You do realize, like, right after Halloween, Christmas is coming up, right? I know, I'm just... So, like, if you want presents, you might want to say they weren't born until, like, the 80s. Younger <laughs> than that. Friend, that would be a good way to go. <laughs> Your grandmother was born in, like, the 50s, 60s. And then okay. January, you can start saying, yeah, I meant the 1880s. But for now, I'd say the 80s. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get on the naughty list. Oh, yeah, Grandma's... Especially been... since one of them listens to the show, and you just asked if she was born in the 30s. 1920s. Because I think <laughs> Grandma Fritz um, is, like, 62... <laughs> Or 65. She's 65, honey. She is 65. Think about how second guess. long ago 65 was. It's 23. 
dude. Huh. Was that well, 1920? Ground Prince <laughs> was born in 1968. Or 58. Oh. Grandma Wegleitner was born in 1955. Nah. Okay. I just need to know that. <coughs> and the word you use for them is classics. They are classics. Like Uncle Eric. For it? No. Uh, hey, uh, that's uh, antique. No, Jack. <laughs> I'm, I'm the same age. Stop. Oh. oh. <laughs> Biblical. <laughs> Sorry. I feel it. <laughs> like Old Testament. <laughs> Jesus. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> All right. No, he's New uh, Testament. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess so. That's like their nephew. Okay, TV monsters. <laughs> da, 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 da. For a... Dracula. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I don't know. He's a pretty cool monster. Who? Dracula. Is he? Yeah. All right, I got a question for everyone. Oh, you, yeah, you wanted to bring that shit up. Oh, my God. Yep. What? Of our classic movie monsters, why is Dracula the only one that was sexualized? Because, Successfully. Because, Successfully. Because look at his pale skin. His chiseled chin. I don't know. <laughs> you turned off my pale skin? <laughs> no, like, if you think about it, since after Neferatu, mm-hmm. Neferatu, right, friend? Don't correct me, oh, jackass. Sorry. For continue, <laughs> friend. Since him, like as soon as we actually got a real rendition of Dracula on the TV, he has been a sexualized creature. It's because some, but people- he's the only one. They tried with the Mummy. They tried with Frankenstein. And they really sucked. Well, look at Frankenstein. Oh, my God. Yeah, no one thinks that. Uh, Wolfman hey. is also a sexualized creature. Ugly yeah. people need my, need um, loving, too. Okay? For well, Twilight kind of sexualized the, the yeah. lichen. That's what I said. Werewolves are a sexualized creature as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now they are. They weren't Man in the 50s. Were them, too. Obviously. No, they weren't. They were friggin' terrifying. That was it. It, it like... In the fifties, there was no sexualized movies of <coughs> the Wolfman. I've well, seen Mel Brooks, the original, but the original Dracula had some the 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 Bela Lugosi had some sexualized stuff. That's from the thirties. Dracula? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That was well, the nineteen thirties, Cole. Yeah, 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 but no, no, but that's no, what no, I'm no, saying. No, Bram Stoker's Dracula, Dracula was, was the eighteen ninety seven. Oh, okay. oh, the little first, little. the first Bram Stoker's Dracula was eighteen ninety seven movie. Yeah. Movie, well, yeah, yes, right. uh, movies, movies, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, um, but that's the thing. Like, if you look at the other ones, like in recent years, they have tried with the Mummy. They have successfully done it now with werewolves. I will mm-hmm. agree with that. Uh, only because they made him a native. Uh, that helped. That's true. For <laughs> <laughs> And we're all dreamy. I, well, you I, know what? Um, this is different, but witches are sexualized. I oh, mean, no, absolutely. Because the minute you see... And, and, and That's I true. I don't want to harp on that a whole lot because we're talking about that next week. But witches, you you, you say the, the term witch and you automatically think of a, a female. Uh, well, and that's the thing, too. Mm-hmm. When it comes to witches, yes, they're sexualized. Yeah. But mm-hmm. it's a taboo thing. Yeah. And you're supposed to want them, but you're not supposed to want them. Uh, well, shit, exactly. look at... Uh, uh, so look yeah, at, but that's the same thing for Dracula. Because Absolutely back not. in the you're 14th century, a yeah, witch was you. almost 80% of the, the people that were killed in the Inquisition, 80% were female. 20% were men. Uh, were all the witches? Absolutely not. But... Um, Witches back then were almost always seen as, as women. They were seen as very pres- promiscuous, always nude. You, you have um, to be more specific than just the Inquisition, because ne- whenever you say the Inquisition, Eric, yeah, the most popular one was the Spanish Inquisition. Mm-hmm. The English, the European <coughs> Inquisition. There we go. The Witching Inquisition. Right. Um, and do you and, know and what? again, we're going to get... I don't even think that's what it was called. I'm sorry, but, but we'll figure that out next guy, week. Honestly, we're going to get, totally we're gonna get deep into that next week. So, uh, we're, I'm not going to... Who the hell loved him? Who? Who? What did I really? miss? All the witches? The chat. Oh. Who? <laughs> oh, I did not. No. Yeah, see? <laughs> oh. You had ch- crushes on weird people, Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what can I say? <laughs> <clears throat> huh. 
Huh. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Rick, do you agree with Caleb? Was he <laughs> sexy to you when you were younger? <laughs> Yeah. A man who can't talk back? Yeah, that's sexy. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Good point. Good point. Um, so why were why are vampires sexualized? Um I think it goes to immortal uh, immortality. Because of the fact that honestly, the first renditions of vampires, one of their powers was sexual ma- manipulation. Yeah. So, of course, they would have to be considered a sexual being. The hardest part, though, with that is back then it wouldn't have been considered manipulation. No. Uh, but Because in that day and age, friend, the guy was law. Like, he. I understand ran, that. You know, they were all But patriarch. the concept of a vampire Patriots. itself, you're luring in people, usually you're young getting ladies. close to people. Usually young maidens, um, usually virgins. It's all it about all the depends. neck. It's all about yeah. if, like, it, you mm-hmm. would almost have to sexualize that, or they wouldn't have gotten away with getting that close to people. And they didn't really. Uh, that was usually a masculine thing. They didn't bring up the vampires until more recent times, wasn't it? With Elvira, primarily. That's true. Mm, no, I believe there was a movie in the fifties that did have. Uh, was there? Okay. Um, where. The vampire did have two women that brought him food. Well, they brought him food. Yes. Okay, I mean, so, but that's the thing, is that... The, the vampire... He turned he, women, he ate men. Okay. He, he went both ways. Yeah. For, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, okay, so coming into more current times, I think Blade. I loved Blade. Uh, I thought Blade was a great... But if you, you know, if you think too. about a vampire... The image of a vampire is a sexual image in itself because they're supposed to be profoundly beautiful. They're Mm -hmm. supposed to be like all of these things. Uh, To not sexualize them would be missing half of... Half of their powers. Yeah. Kayla Kayla hated Blade. I hated Blade. She watched it a month ago for the first time ever. She had never seen the original Blade. Are you serious? Yeah, I hated it. Well, I like the old man. I can't remember his name. Uh, Whistler. Whistler, yeah. Friend Chris Christopherson. Chris. Yep. I just hated the fact that it was so, like, wow, Blade Pose. Woo. Uh, I, but, I don't know. But that's, that's where it's really different, too, is they show both male and female vampires. Mm-hmm. Really? Well, no, he opened... The, the main difference is he opened a new realm for vampires where... They weren't just sexualized creatures. Mm-hmm. Like to most women, yes, they were. He was still sexy. They became. They even scary. sexualized dogs. Yeah. What? <laughs> okay, and you know what? Yeah. Like, yeah, sex- <laughs> hey, hey, hey. And in yeah, recent years, <laughs> in recent years, vam- uh, vampires are not the only undead that have been sexualized. Yeah. Have you seen zombies? Zombies. Have been hardcore uh, too. But yes and no, because I mean, honestly. Uh, so, <coughs> skeletons in like warm, recent uh, years. Warm bodies is probably the only. Oh, what God, other no. ones? What other ones? Oh, Walking no. Dead? Okay. The guy okay. couldn't let go of his wife because, just because she was a zombie. Yeah. He'd rather choose to die with her than for an, um, live without her. And almost every married man that was any of any good like person for an on that show did that. Rick even did it. He was willing to let her bite him, and Carl had to kill kill her. So right. for an, like, she's right. They they have successfully done it, I guess, with zombies. Not all of them. There's some of them that are still pretty gross. Mm-hmm. For an, the Resident Evil ones are still fine. Well, to be perfectly honest, they've done it with pretty much every monster as of the 20th century. Like Not successfully. I, they tried to do it with the mummy. That guy was still creepy. Just in a different way. They even did it with the oh, uh, dude. creature from the Black Lagoon in that movie, it, uh, it was Shape of Water or whatever that was. Yeah. To the point there was a sex scene. Yeah, that was not okay. That, that was no. not okay. No, it was not. 
I, let me. Let, uh, so I want to address Paul's comment. Uh, classic monsters are fascinating creatures that have been featured in various forms of media, such as literature, film, television, comics, and games. They often originate from folklore, mythology, or horror fiction and have become iconic symbols of fear, fantasy, or adventure. For example, Homer wrote about many mythical creatures and monsters, such as but, uh, the Cyclops, the Sirens, the Scylla, and the uh, Chardy. Char uh, Mary Shelley brought us Frankenstein, and Dante encountered Mary, many terrifying and grotesque monsters in his journey through hell, such as Minotaur, the Centaurs, the Harpies, and Lucifer himself. Uh, so, it's interesting how they pick and choose mythological creatures. Uh, what's going to be at Halloween and what's not. For example, you don't hear much about centaurs, cyclops, harpies. I consider them okay. more... Okay. I can explain that. Okay. Go ahead. Try and dress a kid up as a centaur. Go ahead. Dude, have you seen the costumes of today where you have the guy with a fucking alien on his head and he's got four legs? Yeah, but you also got the other side of that, Eric, where a guy puts a fucking sign on his front of his chest and it says, I'm a big fan. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I, yeah, you're, you're going to pay a hundred bucks for a good costume if you look at something like that. Um, Not really. No? No, you should honestly see Hunter's costume this year. Oh, good God. Uh, oh, going to the my God, player? I have pictures. Huh? It's Is he going to the football player? No. no. Here, no. just a minute. Let me load it. Uh, it's Where's horrible. my phone? It's horrible. <laughs> uh, he will be dressed up as Freddie Mercury. Yeah. Oh, shit. And it's goddamn perfect. Yeah, Hunter did go as Freddie Mercury. Is going as Freddie Mercury. And because it's Hunter, it's so perfect. It's not even funny. He's got the high top shoes, the wife beater, some very okay. skinny jeans. See, I love Paul's questions because she yes. actually thinks about them. How do classic monsters reflect the cultural values and anxieties of their time and place of origin? And how do they change or adapt when they are reimagined uh, in different contexts of media? Um, so think in the 40s and 50s is when, uh, well, no, Dracula came out in the 1800s. Bram Stoker did. Vampires themselves came out long, long. I mean, you can trace the first vampire stories back to. Oh God damn it! Wasn't Sumerian? Um, the Greeks, the Greek culture actually is where I've seen the first vampiric story coming. But when you're talking pop culture, pop culture, yes. Yeah. No, uh, what, what I'm going to say, Eric, okay, is when you're talking pop culture, all of those stories beforehand they included life lessons. That's where they adapted. In the mm -hmm. 50s, there was no life lessons in those. No. Yeah. That was pure horror. It was yeah. pure horror. That was for the horror of it. Yes, it was to get into the <coughs> front. Friend, and it worked. Mm -hmm. It was great. Friend, our biggest fear in the 50s was the unknown. Yeah. Friend, will they, won't they? That is our biggest fear in the 50s. Do they really exist? No. No, I mean, Friend, the 40s and 50s, they still have What's that going too. to happen? That is, well, the fear of the unknown of our future mm -hmm. is the scariest thing we have. Yep. For well, the, big, the biggest thing that was movie related Actually, was always anything that was irradiated. Stupid if you want to look, the Those spiders, giant spiders, giant ants, giant guys, mm -hmm. giant women, yep. giant, you know, the, the giant lizards, Godzilla. So, yeah, the, the 50s was the, and, and you're right, Cole, and you're right about that, and that's part of it. But, yeah, radiation was the, the also the big, yeah, mm -hmm. oh, you know. Cold well, war. and that's the thing. Godzilla oh. wasn't just radiation, though. He was a, cumulation, a compilation of other fears in Japan. Um, the right. 1940s is when they first realized, holy shit. We can have a real earthquake here, and it could be really bad. Like, devastating to the city of Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And what did, her, what did Godzilla do every time he touched Tokyo? He destroyed it. He destroyed the entire fucking city just like an earthquake would. Oh, yeah. Friend, um, the idea that their own culture could come back to bite them in the ass. Well, what the hell happened with frickin' World War II? 
<laughs> their own culture came back and bit them in the goddamn ass. Absolutely. Right? Everything that they faced in those movies for the state or the country of Japan was one of their fears. Friend. Oh crap, I got you in your Halloween costume behind I you. think too. Uh, Paula, it is Freddie Mercury from Queen. Uh, and before the AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're if you're listening in, you're missing out on everything in the Discord chat. You need to get yourself in the chat room. Uh, yeah. Underscore at the S4 Bunker Paranormal. Um, so, moving forward, I mean, and, and, and like we said, yeah, they've sexualized everything. So, you're seeing, I guess, a more open culture that, eh, now it's uh, all about uh, not even Freddy Krueger anymore. It used to be about Freddy Krueger and Michael Myers yeah. and... Jason but Boyd. now you look, name a girl's costume now that you can buy that's not slutty. No, no shit. Astronaut. <laughs> no shit. No, they made the oh, astronaut yeah. slutty too. Yeah. Damn it. Uh, Everything. I, I can name one. Um... And is that a salt and pepper? Huh? No, no. Even that. Damn it. Um, John, they sexualized Teletubbies for Halloween costumes. <laughs> oh, oh, John. Oh. And Barney. Sure. I have seen yeah, a you Barney, a Barney costume. No, oh, I've seen that. Yeah, like it, it. That was huge back then. Yeah. For an. Um, <laughs> It became the cultural norm that if you were a girl in your 20s and you were going out for Halloween to mm. a bar, you had to dress up as something... Yeah. Skimpy. Yeah. Friend. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just no. remember our first Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> well, um. yeah, I, Kayla sexualized something that should never be sexualized, honestly. I did. It was hilarious. The Travelocity, I mean, is the travelocity note. note. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I was thinking more Riggedy Ann, but yeah. <laughs> I went to Slutty Luigi. Okay. Mm-hmm. I could see that. Friend. It was great. It was great. <laughs> I mean, I remember when I was like a, a saloon girl or something, and the outfit was very skimpy. Back mm-hmm. in my early twenties, yeah, my first Halloween with my husband. So yeah, I agree. Gosh. Very sexualized. I gotta be perfectly honest. Last year I went as a slutty pirate. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. And that was last year. <laughs> so. Aren't you going as a cow this year? <laughs> what? No. A slutty cow. Actually, I'm going <laughs> as, a, as a taco this year. Huh? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> I am. I'm going as a giant taco. <laughs> With a size of I'm going as a peacock. <laughs> uh, I got to work on Halloween, and we work in a deli, and it's oh. Taco Tuesday, yeah. so we're all okay. going as tacos with taco hats. Yeah. 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 That, that, okay. In that so, context, it makes sense. I'm going as a skeleton because... That's the only time ago, you'll ever be skinny. I was oh. talking to Kayla, and I often, quite often, use my hands to talk. Oh, God, he hit me in the face with his wedding <laughs> ring because it flew off his finger. Because I, I am now skinnier than I was when we got married. Dad lost mm-hmm. a baby weight before. So, the... I'm going as a skeleton just to immortalize that. <laughs> okay. Did you just honestly tell me that Dad lost the baby weight before I did? Yeah. You're a dink. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I gained it with you. I should be allowed to lose it with you. Yeah, well. Friend. But, no, okay, so, Howard, how do they change or adapt when they are reimagined in different contexts and media? They um, get new powers. For, well, I'll use vampires for an example. Mm-hmm. Friend, um, like the sparkliness. The change isn't always well, no, but the change isn't always um, immediate when it changes media. Yeah. For example, we start with uh, 
vampires were originally a very scary thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it was like Vlad the Impaler shit. Yeah. And now blah, it's blah, like blah. a guy that sparkles and is moody. Yes, but, but the first movie, movie okay. the first movie was Nesferatu. Yeah. yeah. Which was absolutely fucking terrifying still. But it not, really was for that time. For that time period, yeah. But in all fairness, there's only one movie series that made sparkly vampires. That we all always laugh at. I mean, that's not true. I saw Blade. Uh, have you seen Blade? Looks sparkly. At Monster High, all those. They're sparkly vampires. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. There's a lot yeah. of them. Hey, okay. Don't okay. Don't judge me. At least. Dracula. Well, not. okay. So <laughs> if you watch a lot of the animes too. I okay. don't watch anime. I, I know you don't watch anime. <laughs> anime in itself is just sexualized. <laughs> Yeah. No, but I'm telling you, yeah, like that. I agree. The monsters in anime, yeah, are a lot more. How do I put that? That they're a lot more Stretch sparkly bars. and. Yeah, I don't know how to Stretch explain that. Stretch. <laughs> well, but that's a totally like that's a total pop culture thing nowadays too, because you there is not a cartoon in the world. That has not been completely sexualized on the internet. Yeah. Well, yeah. I there mean, you got fan a, fiction. I mean, you have a. There's actually a rule on the Sonic internet. Sonic the Hedgehog that. with a giant wiener. Oh no! Like, no no no! Thomas the Tank Engine. What? Huh? Yeah. Oh yeah! Yeah. Look oh. up. Yeah. Go you look up know, fan know. art of Thomas the Tank Engine or Rule Thirty Four Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Rule Thirty Four. Yes. If you look up <laughs> anything in Rule Thirty Four. It's um, sexualized. Yeah. yeah. That's actually a rule on uh, the internet. All of, like, Kaliu or whatever his name was. Dude, and they're worried about drag queens. Right? The fuck? But, like, yeah, no, you, you look at... There is some nasty-ass crap on the internet for all this stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, um... But yeah. really, it's our own fault. Yep. So. Oh, no, absolutely. <coughs> but all they worried about, it, it, like I said, is... is Great queens when their own kids' cartoons are sexualized. So yeah, don't go to the library to watch a Drake Queen show when your kids sitting on TV watching worse shit. <coughs> to be fair, I'm not going to a library to watch a Drake Queen show. Neither am I, friend. Because um, honestly, if we're going to watch a Drake Queen show, I want to be able to like cheer for them. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that in a library. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, like, hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, shake your ass more. Uh, okay. I've never told a drag queen show. <laughs> that, that doesn't happen. Friend, I don't oh. know what you do at a drag show, but friend, I think we're different. I've been to a couple, and actually they are pretty awesome. Yeah, no, uh, we used to go to the one in Bellingham. Yeah, we used to go to the Rumors Drag Show, um, yeah. and it was one of my favorites. They would do all kinds of stuff, and then they'd get up and we'd do the time warp. It was great. So, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, that's not sexual at all. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, when did that first... When did they first uh, create the Rocky Horror Picture Show? The 60s. 60s, yeah. And that's still popular as hell today. It's I mean, a cult following. Oh, yeah, complete. Like, yeah, it, because friend. it's interactive. It's, um, it's become interactive experience. <laughs> I don't yeah. know, a lot of things. Like, still going your first time is still considered go being called, you get called a virgin. Mm -hmm. For an, yeah. um. Yeah, sure. And then mm -hmm. it's one of the few shows that they actually still have, like, one of the few live plays mm -hmm. that they will still have a splash zone. Mm -hmm. Right, up on the front? Yes. For an, although the original reason for that is much different than it is now. Uh, yeah. Friend. Um, it's also when, forbidden. It's just like the forbidden thing. It's the whole character of. I forget her name now. What's her name? The, oh, what's her name? Uh, which Susan one? Like, Sus yeah, so, uh, so Janet. I mean, Damn yeah, it. It's like the whole Janet, I love you. Yeah. But, <laughs> and, but that's the thing. That's why, honestly, it is losing its cult following. Why? Why? What are you talking about? 
Transvestites are no longer a fucking taboo thing. Oh. They're the norm. They are supposed to be, we are supposed to accept them, oh. so this should not be a bad thing. This should not be something you are not supposed to enjoy. Yeah, they're all changing from that to Danny and DeVito. Yeah, it's no longer a guilty pre- pleasure, mm-hmm. so it is losing its cult following with younger people. Yeah. Um, yeah, because they just don't like uh, Hedgewick and the though. Angry Age. Also because uh, I'm learning the new word is problematic, and apparently mm-hmm. a few of the songs and a few of the jokes in that movie are and the show are problematic, apparently. Uh, uh, yeah, but I you know, know what? I'm sorry. Every single thing made before, I don't know, the last five years... You can find yeah. something in it that you would consider problematic now. Well, that's what they call wolf. Yeah, fuck that. Now. I know what my costume is this year. What's that? I'm just wearing a sign. And it's going to say, I'm problematic. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. And I think you should just put duct tape across your freaking mouth and say, cancel culture. <laughs> that's a good one, too. Or hey, just, wait, wait, wait. Or you, you wear problematic, I'll do the cancel culture okay. thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um. <laughs> and on the back of our shirts, it'll say, try that in a small town. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible. Oh, there you go. <laughs> They'll walk in downtown concrete. Fred. <laughs> With... Bulletproof vessel. Yes. But. See, K- Kayla found one of them. <laughs> yeah, That's Thomas. Thomas, the tank engine. Wow. Yeah. And I found a fuel. Does that make you horny, Eric? No. <laughs> I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> yeah. See, that's how this happens. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> oh. What? What? Nothing. <laughs> you, don't think, you don't think you can? <laughs> I don't care. It's 2023. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> right? Friend, I can't no, wait for you 20. can't. Yeah, you I'll, can't do whatever you want. I can't wait for 2024. Very careful. Yeah. Yeah, the aliens are supposed to invade. All right, fucking hope they do. What were you going to say, Rick? Oh, I was going to say, no, you can't do anything these days because everything is problematic. That's the exact opposite. You can't do anything anymore because somebody will have some offense to it. Yeah, some girl yeah, on the internet with true. blue hair will make a uh, video about you and say how you're wrong. You seem to have, like, experience. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who hurt you, John? Is there something that happened in school that you haven't told your parents about yet? The internet hurt me, father. <laughs> some girl with blue hair <laughs> <laughs> on the internet. I said one thing, and now I'm canceled on Twitter. Are you serious? Yeah. I told oh you God. not to say fuck black people on <coughs> I, No, I never said that. I said, a, I said a joke about, uh, I think it was cats or something. Smurfs. Like that. Smurfs have blue hair. but I kind of got banned for a few weeks. I don't know why. But You're definitely your up. father's son. <laughs> so I just made a new account and just posted a ton of that stuff. Hey, look, it's a positive potato. And he no. is not. <laughs> Once he gets a permanent ban on Twitter, then he can say he's my son. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I have two accounts that have that. Uh, Positive potato. Sad I potato. may be a t- tiny potato, but I believe in you. Go do your thing. Nice. And that's my response. Uh, that's a depressed that's potato, <laughs> John. <laughs> I know. That's what happens when you're a positive potato. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> you become depressed. <laughs> what? What am I missing? You guys are funny. On the chat room, there, Paula, that's her potato. costume. Yeah. You're going to be a positive potato, Paula? I like how you're like, you're like, oh right? <laughs> oh, oh. oh my god, I dare you, Rick. Do uh, it. <laughs> that, that, that actually looks like you, Rick. <laughs> Hey, you don't gotta do a whole lot. Oh my god, that guy does look like a potato, though. Oh, Rick, she just called you potato. No. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, Sean? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, uh, that's how fries are made, Dad. 
Really? Yeah. That's how French fries are made. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's potato shit. Yep. Friend. Oh. Uh. Oh. So, yeah, I, I think, uh, and I don't know what's going to happen from here, uh, culturally, because, I mean, once you hit the sexualized point, well, what's going to happen? Oh, well, it can get worse. I know. Oh, it can get a lot worse. I know. Have you ever been to Japan? No. Have you? No. I've just seen it. <laughs> No. <laughs> Uh, that's the, the one country I haven't been in the Middle East. Or, well, I have been in the Middle East, but I haven't been in a. I don't corner. think Japan's in the Middle East. You might want to no, check it's, that. No, it's yeah. not. <laughs> I know it's not. <laughs> oh, but I have not been to the Asian side. Yeah. Supposedly, North Korea uh, has beautiful weather around this year. Uh, Paula, that is problematic. You are not allowed to tar and feather yourselves. That uh, they, they kind of did away with uh, uh, with tarring and feathering. Oh. Yeah, and it's kind of a cultural thing, I think. Still, though. <laughs> you, you might get shot in concrete because yeah. you'll <laughs> think you're a grouse or black. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or that. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh. <sighs> <laughs> that, that might be it. That's oh, called geez. cannibalism. Yeah. But its finger looking good. <laughs> oh. oh. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't dress up as a Bigfoot here either. Yeah, it didn't work out for Chewbacca too well. Really? Yeah, so for the filming of. The uh, Empire Strikes Back? No. The indoor scene. Yes, the indoor scenes of... Return uh, of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi. Thank you, Rick. For, an, um, for the indoor scenes, they were filmed on the peninsula. In the oh, shit. Uh, Olympic Mountains. And they had to have three guys in high-vis yellow and orange suits. Surrounding Chewbacca, Chewbacca at all times because, because people would actually to take him. shots at him. Yeah, actually, I think. Oh my guy fucking god! I didn't hear all that shit. That. Yeah, they thought he was Bigfoot, so people started trying to shoot him. Yeah, let's shoot. Let's shoot Bigfoot. That's a really smart. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I know you didn't hear about that. That's because it was in the eighties. You were already in yeah. your seventies, and your hearing was already starting to go. What? So. <laughs> huh? Is that again? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait, how old are you? <laughs> 82. Seriously? <laughs> you look pretty good for your age. I do, you wanna. How old did you say? 82. I, <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Oh, oh. God. I, I'm way older than you now, uh, Rick. <laughs> no, really, Rick said he was the same age as you, so that that's... that's oh, Rick's 82 That's well. what this is. That's canon. Friend, yeah. okay. Rick is 82. Yeah. <laughs> a day over slightly. <laughs> yep. Yep. I had a T Rex for a pet in my backyard. Oh. Yep. For an, I was his backyard was North America. I think Jesus was my neighbor. Well we were friends saying? with the original mummy. Like <laughs> the mummy. <laughs> um, before he wrote the book, me. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, <yeah. laughs> when there it says like, "Are you my mommy?" <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, stretch moose. Oh, so, so what uh, TV monster scared you guys the most <laughs> when you were younger? <laughs> like, how young? How young are we going? Because yeah. How like you, your yeah, first I'm scary gonna... TV monster, like the one that you're like, oh my god, easy Annabelle. Okay, <laughs> okay that makes sense that for that your age. I was terrified of dolls because the boogeyman the was scary. What was that? The boogeyman, like the boogeyman. Was, nobody's kind of brought that up, but yeah, yeah. Like my brother would always talk about the boogeyman. In my age, I was <laughs> 1980, so that was like a big thing. Thriller, though, really scared the crap out of me. Yeah, like the, that, that was a 
Uh, like you loved it as much uh, as it scared the shit out of you. I was already. I I I don't think. Uh, oh, Do it. I know the uh, the van, the space vampire in Buck Rogers in the twenty fifth century. The they were they had space vampires or a space vampire, and he was after my girl Erin Gray, who was get what her name was on the show. But anyway. So, for me, like Paula, or like uh, Rosella, for an, it wasn't a movie one. It was the boogeyman, the the monster in the closet, that kind of thing, because... Okay. Yeah. Movie right. ones were unbelievable already. Right. It was the 80s. Everything was unbelievable. Right. Well, and I have an experience with the monster in the closet kind of thing. Like, I think it was because my gifts or something, I was always really terrified of my brother's closet. And I was terrified to sleep in my own room, so I'd run to his room for kind of safety. Even though I don't know why. He never would have protected my butt anyway. But <laughs> I would always lie on the floor. And then there was this green glowing thing one night with, like, eyes that were really spooky. It was really scary. And, like, you know, sometimes I'm like, well, maybe I was dreaming. But I remember this thing so vividly, so I think that I saw something that nobody else was kind of seeing. I was terrified of his closet because we moved in. Yeah, Specifically, his closet. Come out of the closet. Yeah. Kind of weird. So um, yeah, like the closet, boogeyman, under your bed. Okay, I actually do have one. I had to think, though. And we'll get to your, your question here in, in a few, Paula. But are uh, nowadays monsters scarier or just different? Uh, but what, we'll, yeah, we'll, get yeah. to, we'll get to that. Uh, do you guys remember Spawn? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the movie didn't come out till I was like 15. But the original, or one of the original graphic novels did come out when I was like 10. Clown, Violator. Hmm. Used to scare you? Yeah. That one gave me nightmares. Okay. But I also, the problem is, I read more than I watched TV when I was a kid. Right. So, like, I had Stephen King growing up. And not the movies, yeah. the books. Right. Yeah. And. Mine is really stupid. Huh. So. Ronald McDonald. I grew, up, <laughs> I grew up in a household with my grandparents who were, like, way older. Okay. And they used to watch all the, like, Matlock and the. Nighttime shows and like stuff like that. Wheel okay? of Fortune. And I remember watching Alfred <laughs> Hitchcock, the Alfred okay. Hitchcock Hour right. on TV, and there was this one where it, it, it was a train, mm -hmm. <coughs> and <coughs> this guy kept trying to get on this train, and he wasn't allowed on the train, and you end up figuring out that the guy was a ghost the whole time, like he was dead. The entire time. And there's just this picture in my head of him standing at the window of the train. <laughs> with like a right. ghostly form. And that scared the living Christ out of me when I was little. And so mine is actually similar to yours. Uh, mine was actually more the Twilight Zone in the 70s. Mm, yeah. Um, and they were black and white. Uh, and there's one that did get to me as a as a seven or eight year old that it was aliens that came down and they were like ants and had a human face. Um, so yeah, the old classic uh, Twilight Zones, not the new shit, but uh, the old ones. Uh, the original <laughs> Outer Limits used to scare the crap out of me too. It might have been, it might, yeah, yeah, and it might have been Outer Limits, not because they always had going. like it, weird little creepy shit. Yeah, that you were like, what? Yeah. Uh, that that was more what got me, and I, I guess the only you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, shit like that. Yeah. No, that, that that was tame. Uh, I think the only one that really got to me was Hellraiser, because that was fucking graphic. Well, see, and the problem for me was if it's a movie that has just like a monster in it or something mm -hmm. like that, it, it's They're the predictable. psychological thrillers that get me a lot more yeah. than the, ah, scary monster is chasing you. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Oh, we'll be right back. God damn it, I have to change my answer again. 
Mm. What do you got? Robert Stack. He was the scariest motherfucker in the world. In the 80s. Mr. Rogers? Who? Nope. Robert Stack. Oh, there, 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 there's, a, there's a light in this guy. Here. Oh, cool. Aliens. Right now. Who the hell is Robert Stack? The host of Unsolved Mysteries. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, okay. that fucker's sense. voice permeated every dream I had when I was a kid. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Like, because he made me believe, even though I didn't even live in America, every murderer in America was coming to get me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michelle, I think that was a good time to take Paul's question, actually. Cause, uh, we, we, didn't huh? we didn't get Rick. Huh? We didn't get Rick. Yeah, Rick. What scared you? Oh, Rick. Rick, Rick, Rick. What you got? Rick. Look, are we talking about the TV thing? And yeah, uh, I told you it was the vampire from uh, Buck okay. Rogers. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. But I don't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> You know, we're, well, well, we're talking about when you guys were kids, so I'm pretty sure it was either Kane or Abel. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was uh, darkness uh, itself. <laughs> no, actually, uh, Kane didn't kill Abel. I did, um, but and they just, you know, I, I just. So yours was him. Eric. <laughs> um, so yours was the first uh, solar eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> that's still that's still a bit from. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Are more recent monsters Ooh. scarier, or just different? And why? Uh, they're just uh, different. Yes, but why, John? I mean, they're just different. It, mainly because they're trying to capture the old classic guys, but it's just not. Uh, it's I, I don't think they are full-on recreations. Yeah, they completely. are. But I think it, it's not the monsters. It is the CGI. Yeah, it's and just, the jump scares yeah, and the effects. Like Pennywise. He is a recreation of every 50s alien movie. Yeah. Okay. The Unknown. Yeah. For an, um, Slenderman. Every thought form. Right. So, Hitchcock. The Twilight Zone. So the Outer the Babadook, Lance, then. The Babadook friend, yes. would be the same. Annabelle mm. was Chucky. Yeah. Okay, but you know what? I have to say that the more recent ones do scare me a lot more than the older ones, but that's yeah, personal reasoning. Seven. Personal reasoning is mm-hmm. it seems like all of the new scary movies, they have people that are contortionists play those parts, and the awkward movements are what gets me. It's not even the costumes, it's not the it's the weird twisty contortionism contortionism movements. The movements that a that normal they human have. shouldn't be able to do. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that freaks me the hell out. Like if somebody like turned around backwards, flipped on their back and chased after me, I don't I don't give a shit. I'm fucking <laughs> I, I do want to uh, correct Paula. I want to correct you <coughs> on one thing. How much are the demigorgon is not new. He's absolutely not new. He oh, is no. now. Oh, the only different thing is he is now culturally acceptable. Well, Demi Gorgon. Demi Gorgon originally was a demon, wasn't he? He was the demon off of Dungeons and Dragons 2.0. Yep. Okay. He was added into the game in the 1970s for an after when uh, version two came out, and for an he was the main main bad, bad guy. guy. Mm-hmm. He was the bad, baddest thing you could come up with to fight. Okay. Mm-hmm. Friend. I love D&D. And he's still in there. <laughs> really? Yeah. He's just not as bad anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, and I understand, too, this. Uh, so the Stranger Thing, I love Stranger Things because uh, I, I look at it now and I recognize because they are so accurate with their 80s. <laughs> Props and whatnot. I'm like, oh, oh they, they got a political. Oh shit! Yeah, I remember that. Um, yeah, it's kind of. It's crazy. nostalgic. <laughs> yes, uh, it I, is I, a very nostalgic show. It was, is, um, I, I, and I love how. I mean, they did their homework for the series because they're 
everything they have 80s cars they have you know everything is well and that's the thing that's why it was popular on Stranger Things mm -hmm. mixed with the Demi Gorgon that's why they, they were playing that character that's what about point was because <laughs> these were kids weren't rich mm -hmm. like yeah, their families were fairly well off but they themselves weren't rich, so they were buying second-hand books. <laughs> they were using books from libraries, therefore they were using older copies right. of the D&D books. And that's how you killed your time back then, yes. was playing D&D. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was all kinds of board games, mm -hmm. and it was outside riding your bikes around, doing all kinds of, like, tracking around in the woods, <laughs> stuff like that. It wasn't sitting there playing a video game like they do now. Wait, yeah. Atari? Was, I know, I like my Atari. Yeah, that, you got to remember that Bob. came out in the no, same I mean, There were certain video games, for what? sure. I mean, you were kicked outside, and it's like, come back at dusk, it's dinner. Then. But. And then you know it's time to come no, back. No, but. Yeah. And the first okay video games, you got to remember, were text based. Yep. They were mm -hmm. D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they right. were all those RPG. Oh, like, even if you think about the original, like, gathering games, okay, you had, like, the Oregon Trail, which was text-based as mm -hmm. well. Oh, hey, you're going here to meet this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Friend. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I mean, back Somehow then, we went did... back to it. Huh? Somehow yeah. in the 90s, we went back, we went back a step. Yeah. We did kind of circle back. In the around. 90s, they brought out the Choose Your Own Adventure books, remember those? Yeah. No. No? Friend, so you'd read for like 10 where, pages? Where was I in the 90s? Friend. <laughs> they had books in Iraq and freaking <laughs> okay? Friend. I was all over the place in the 90s. I didn't have a chance to uh, you were on the Oregon pick trail up the new shit. But no, they, you'd read 10 pages, mm -hmm. and then it would give you three options of how to continue your story. And you'd go to page 15 for this continuation, page 12 for this continuation, right. or yeah. page 5. For and you this kept one. doing that all the mm -hmm. way through the story. So you could read that book a hundred times and it'd turn out different every single time. Yeah. Friend. Because the book had like 30 endings. Okay, okay. Kind of like fan fiction. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. like, it's yeah, like the original. I had that mm -hmm. back when Eric and I were kids. They, you, I, yeah, what were they called though? They, we we had them where you had to put go to page twenty two and you, or you go to page seven or you know, no. See, I don't. I don't I, yeah. How did your books have so, like that many pages when they were that heavy? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my god! You'd be amazed at how strong you can be when you're carrying stone tablets around all the time. So yeah. <laughs> we had wagons. Damn it. No, you know, the radio that was wagon. years later. <laughs> that was after the wheel was invented, <laughs> sir. Not true. I saw. I've seen a wagon in the Flintstones. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah, but the square wheels were there. there <laughs> square I, know, wheels. The, I had the square wheels. They they kind of sucked. They're well, kind of floppy. You know, at least they weren't the triangle wheels. Right, that was that was Rick. Yeah, <laughs> Rick had them in Texas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and that was only in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our, our our vehicles with square wheels were four by fours. So yeah, we we created the four by four. God damn it! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, dinosaurs on camels. Um, yeah, each wheel had four sides. Huh? <laughs> each wheel had four sides. Yeah. Okay, uh, before, I you... but, or before I get lost in this, we're talking about Kayla was talking about the creepy things, the contortion, and everything else. Have you guys seen the movie Legion? Yes. Oh uh -oh. my god! That, that, that old woman climbing on the ceiling. Uh huh. That yeah. That's yeah. what I'm talking bones. about. Like that creepy, like bones where they're growing weird, and they're like. <laughs> that lady got Ugh. robbed. She should have won an Oscar for that. Yeah. Hmm. My kids are still afraid of that ring. Like, just the clip of the ring. Oh, yeah, where she's coming yeah. out of, like, the... Oh, yep. yeah. Ugh. Well, yeah, and the other one, uh, the... God damn it, the one that started in Japan. Uh, the, gr the, the Grudge. The gr yeah, grudge. The Grudge. Mm -hmm. Kayla's favorite movie. No, no. Okay, so... The way the, 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 way the creature moves and the clicking. Uh, what was that one that we watched once with the kids? Which we probably shouldn't know, but <laughs> where 
The kids go to their grandparents' house and it's not their grandparents. Oh fuck yeah! And it was like the visitor, the visit or something. Like yeah. That. Oh my god, that and was scary. The grandmother is crawling through a crawl space and she is contortioning her way through the crawl space. Oh and like her body is just twisting in ways that the human body actually can't. Right. And I was like about ready to vomit. I can't handle it. Oh my god, I can't handle it. I can't. And contortionists scare the shit And those shit out are of worse than the job scares. They are because they like mentally stick with you forever. Like, ugh. Now, is the inner sister <coughs> watched The Exorcist for the first time ever? The original. Yeah. And because they weren't allowed to as kids, they had to do more of a personal thing with with their mom being terrified of demons, but uh. They were bored. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it's nowhere near... Where they were literally bored for the first hour and a half. And even, you know, it, it didn't scare them at all. They were wondering what the big whoop was about. But I think we talked about this. You and I talked about this the other day. Uh, that, yeah. yeah. It had to do with the era. Yeah, they set themselves up for disappointment because they listened to their mm-hmm. parents. They listened to how scary it was for them. And to our parents in that era... Yes, it was scary. I don't think a mom ever really watched it. Probably not. <laughs> I, I couldn't mean, see your mother so, watching something like that. Huh? I couldn't see your mom watching something like that. But oh, like mother-in-law, not my mom. Friend, um, but when my dad first saw it in the drive-in theater, mm-hmm. friend, they played it once because they had gotten it late, and then the next day they had to show something else because of everything that was happening in the United States with all the people passing out, women actually going into labor. For an, um, yeah, it scared the hell out of a lot of people. And Dad and his brothers were actually able to get into the theater, like the drive-in at night, and they actually stole the 9 millimeter for it. Because they wanted to see it again. <laughs> Damn. Now, an, there was... Modern day phenomenon like that, okay, weirdly enough, I would have to say it would be uh, Avatar. Okay? The original Avatar people were, like, committing suicide and doing all kinds of crazy shit because they wanted to go to... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Right? Yeah. Like, it was this huge thing where they were, like, all kinds of people started committing suicide, and they started doing all this stuff. For Avatar? The Avatar. Yeah. yeah. Because they wanted to go to Pandora. <laughs> and they thought that was the only way, because that's how he went. Yeah. Wow. You're talking about in the movie, or are you talking about real people? Real we're people talking about real people life. in oh real life. Like, it was this huge thing that swept over everywhere. Like, people were just committing mass suicides because of that movie. And this is honestly the problem with having these films that are so realistic for their time. Because back back when The Exorcist came out, it was as realistic as you could get. Oh yeah, for that for that era, for, absolutely. Friend and um, you like almost every movie can have that kind of effect. The first time Jason came out, the his first movie, right? Friend, summer camps suffered the next year because kids refused to go. Right, right. Friend, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. Everybody was freaking out. No one would go Tourism to Texas. Tourism went way down <laughs> in Texas. It did. I wouldn't it, go to that part of Texas. Yeah, it never came back. <laughs> no, they just all became politicians in Texas. Well, yeah, but then they just kill each other anyway. Oh, that's so. I wish it would. Lyndon right. Baines just was saying. the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, especially in that part of the world. He, yeah. He was noted for lots of bodies, lots of people disappeared. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. But the They'll problem just- is... No one, like, 
Okay, we had the Avatar thing. How many of us actually remembered that? Very few. I think Uh-oh. it was me. Yeah. <laughs> then, and then, like, we had the Exorcist thing. Right. Eric and Rick, you guys were from that era. Like, you were a little bit young when it came out, but you were still from that era. Do you remember right. that? The Exorcist? Um, like, how much of an impact it had on people? Well, it, 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 the Exorcist was one thing, and Andy Andy, and, well, oh my god, rock music, and you can actually, uh, well, speak about it. that's what started the Satanic Panic. Right. Okay, was. Like, we've had all these things happen, right? Right. And yet we are still immortalizing people like Jeffrey Dahmer. We are still right. doing this to ourselves. Mm-hmm. We are. We are still chasing that endorphin rush. It's called history repeating itself. Friend. Well, and the problem is, is that, if, like you said, we are mm-hmm. taking actual serial killers and actual horrible people, <coughs> and we're giving them making them shows. into something. Oh, hey, look at how cool this guy is! Oh, yeah. And we're doing all of these TV shows and documentaries and all of this stuff, saying. Basically, hey, check this guy out. Yeah. Yeah. We should not be memorializing these people as Well, honestly, it wouldn't be if it wasn't for Hollywood, for lack of a (coughs) word, the movie industry. Right. Trying to make money off them. Absolutely. We're having a problem. Absolutely we would. How? Stephen King can do it with a book. True. And do it way better than the fucking movie ever did. Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, So did Michael Christian. I'm not familiar with that one. Read Jurassic Park. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Friend. The movie was great. It was an awesome movie. Right. Dinosaurs rock. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Read the book. It's absolutely goddamn terrifying. Yeah. Friend. Mm -hmm. That's so, the thing. The only Stephen King I actually read was Christine, and that was terrifying compared to the movie. Well, the, I mean, I no, I, the stand is really terrifying more than the actual movie. Which one? I don't really know. The stand. The yes. stand is oh yes, oh far more. I've heard that a lot. I am not allowed to read horror novels. It's not a good idea, mm-hmm. ever. Um. I will say his worst one is still Pet Cemetery. They made a new TV series out of that coming out. Yeah. Yep. But it's mostly cool, because right? of my view huh? on watching things. Like, uh, well, for example, me and my dad were just talking about this. friend. Mm-hmm. Um, Titanic. Uh-huh. I will never watch that movie again. Because it's so long? No. <laughs> you make a joke. <laughs> That's why I won't watch Braveheart. Oh. Oh. I I'll watch Braveheart and Border Titanic. But do you guys remember the scene where they're sitting in the water and the sh- last rowboat is going through and checking all the bodies? Right. Yeah. Go actually watch it again. There's dead babies floating in the water. Oh well, yeah. Oh. I get that it's historically accurate. Uh huh. Doesn't mean they need to fucking show it. Yeah. For well, anything well, that's a really big problem with anything anything. that shows a child's death on the screen. Mm-hmm. Now, Pet Cemetery does not show it. The original. No. Friend, <laughs> the book though. The way he describes it puts it, it right into your detail. goddamn mind, yeah. and you picture it. Well, that's a good writer. Well, yes, but there's writer. certain <laughs> things you don't need to actually yeah. visualize yeah. that much. But if they can make you visualize... Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. For sure. That does right. take a challenge as far as writing. But, like Star but Wars. there are certain things that just should never be visualized. Oh, yeah, true. After episode three of Star Wars, I almost stopped watching the whole series. I almost left it and I was not going to be a fan anymore. Mm-hmm. Which would have been really fuck- like a real shame because I have Darth Vader on my shoulder as a tattoo. Right. Friend. But, when Vader walked in, well, when Anakin walked into the room of young Padawans and his lightsaber lit up, they shut the scene off. 
that's all they had to show was him turning the uh, lightsaber on. Mm-hmm. And as soon as they showed that, you knew exactly what he did. Yeah, it that's does. All they had to do. They didn't actually have to show him destroying a kid. They didn't have to show him killing a kid. They didn't even have to show him maiming one. Right. They were able to tell the story without it. Friend, we all know there was kids on the Titanic. That doesn't mean you have to show the dead bodies in the water. Mm. Friend. I didn't even know that. Yeah, me neither. But now, now that I know about it, I will never watch it again. Well, but okay, right. you're comparing a, a science fiction movie that kids go to see versus uh, a film that was rated PG-13, I guess, so uh, that was based on an actual historical event. Okay, uh, but it was rated PG-13 <laughs> for the boobs. Trying <laughs> the realist of the, while all at the same time horribly flawing so many things. So. No, but Rick, it's any movie. I don't care what type of movie it is, what kind of genre it is. Friend, if it shows a kid getting killed, it's I will unless, never support that again. Unless it's Shoulder of the Core. No. Nope. Even nope. that. Friend, <laughs> Cole has a very... As much as I want distinct. to say I would not let a black-eyed child into my home, mm-hmm. I honestly can't. No, we totally both would. We would end I'd up probably both push Kayla out of the way to let him into the house. <laughs> okay, I'm telling you that if a kid came up to our door, no matter who the hell that kid was, whether mm-hmm. they were satanic or a black eyed kid or something like that, and asked for help, I'd open the damn door. It doesn't yeah, matter who they are. Just wait till like I go to school. <laughs> I want to know what they do when they get into the house. They're scary. Don't worry, when you leave this house, I'm making sure you leave with a black eye. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Hey, um, so, I think, like, okay, so black eyed children, well, are they that like, is, yeah. are they like vampires, because they have to be invited in? Oh. No. Oh. I, I don't feel that's right. I think it's but, satanic, really. Like, I mean, isn't it just a devil because you're supposed to... I mean, I just took a demonology course. <laughs> you have yeah. to invite it in. I kind so. of... Oh, kind of like more of like a devil than like a... Like you have to yeah, invite it into your... Yeah, that's the whole yeah. mm-hmm. thing behind it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the, pro- the problem with that is that is so misconstrued throughout history um, because according to some religions, just doing one sin... Invites a demon. Invites him in. Yeah. And I'm committing five right now. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm wearing, like, how many different types of cloth? Um, right. For an... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, if you actually look at, like, the sins of the Bible, like, as today, mm-hmm. uh, dude, very few people don't commit several sins in a few minutes. Yeah. I, I got a question, though. Well, like... But- the, the New Testament pretty much, you know, seals all that up. We get down to just the twelve, the Ten Commandments, almost the Twelve Commandments. <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> History of the World Part One, but yeah, yeah. we. I mean, yeah, we, <laughs> they they pretty much knocked it down to just the basic, you know, tenets about how you should live your life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's not a. You, you're not gonna. And I'm guessing most of what we interpret to be modern vampires, which would be Bram Stoker, all those rules were set out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The problem yeah. is, your Ten Commandments, we break those by the time we're six, at least every well, couple of days. Well, Honor thy mother yeah. and father. <laughs> yeah. How many kids well, don't... Don't lie, don't so, steal, don't... Uh, yeah. God. I the thing is, like, yeah, like... The, you're absolved of your sins. But again, Rick, it depends on your religion. True. Because I have to confess to them in order to be absolved. And I'm not going to lie. It's been a while. Hmm? Friend, <laughs> me and the priest are going to spend a lot of time together. <laughs> Friend. Have fun with you. <laughs> but. And, and oh, well, then again, how whose rules do the vampires go by? Is it the Catholic Church? Is it the, you know, is it the Methodists? Is it the Baptists? Is it the, because you go to the Southern Baptists and yeah, you're back to Old Testament. 
So. They follow state law now. <laughs> so, you know, the whole uh, separations of church and state, friend, yeah. they don't have to listen to the church anymore. <laughs> That's why crosses <laughs> don't work on modern day vampires. The state will. Do you know why? Only well, medium rare. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I actually found out why stakes were considered the. Um, Unless you pull them back out, you had to leave it in the heart. It had nothing to do with their heart. No? No. Had to do with the wood? It had to do with sticking it into the coffin. Oh. What? Okay, so a vampire cannot die. Okay. Right? They're an immortal creature. Right. So you stick them right through the chest because when you try and pull it back out, if you got it into the bottom of the coffin, you couldn't. Hmm. If you get it through a fleshy part, you can shake it loose. Because it's going through the rib cage, you can't shake it loose as easily, Fran. Therefore, they're stuck there. Oh, okay. That makes sense. It was to keep them in their coffin. That was it. It never killed them. So Buffy lied to us. Absolutely. That bitch. bitch. Oh, but I got a question. So if you have to invite a vampire into your house to let it in and kill you, why don't vampire hunters just... Stay Dude. outside? Come no, the <laughs> no, just be like a snail all the time. Have like a house on their back, then just <coughs> hide in, have a little spear. <laughs> or grab like, you and pull you out. Like if they just... They can't, That's why they can't go in. most of them were considered gypsies and had like their version of mobile homes that they lived in. Yeah, why don't they just like make a little snail shell for them and just hide in whenever they see a vampire and just spear you're not invited. Hold <laughs> <laughs> Again, John, the whole idea was to actually scare people. Friend, um, if you saw a vampire going after Gary the Snail, is that going to scare the <laughs> hell out of you? <laughs> no, but it would be funny. <laughs> it would be so funny. <laughs> it, it, you're just going to turtle it? Yeah. Oh, man. Just tur- let's just hide under like a little doghouse. Say, haha, you're not allowed in. Paula, thank you. I love my emu. <laughs> Friend. <laughs> uh, she's not kidding. She's freaked out in, the, in her comments above that. She is legitimately freaked out by any of that 70s Satan stuff to the extent that, uh, that what was that, ride with the race with the devil? It oh, had yeah. uh, Peter Fonda and <laughs> uh, yeah, it was just Loretta Slip from uh, Hot Lips Houlihan, and they're in a motorhome, and these Satanists in Texas, I think, are chasing them all over the countryside. So, yeah, it was it, it was the most hilarious thing ever. I was all prepared to be scared by this movie, and, and I laughed at it. She was terrified. Okay, so... Read your own. <laughs> I've never really been scared of the demon movies. Okay, but you give me a ghost movie of pretty much any kind, and I'm talking, it can even be, like, Charles Cloud like, stupid, sh- like, oh, love no. story no. shit. I, I am terrified of fucking ghosts on in cinema. Let's put it this way. Me and Kayla watched The Haunted Mansion the other night, <laughs> and at the end of it, she kind of fell asleep. I still had to put on a regular Disney film for her to go to sleep to. Yeah. Friend, so she is that. You have to something happy before you go to bed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I can't, I can't do it. I mean, I'm like that after a par- paranormal investigation. I'm like, okay, I'm praying. I'm lighting my, like, angel candles and stuff like that, putting on something, like, funny. Like, put on friends. You won't think of paranormal stuff at all, you know? Or just put on And party. then you can sleep. What? Or you could just, like, watch the Barbie cartoon. That's what I used to do as a kid. Like, yeah. when I stayed up. Yeah, yeah like, one. yesterday. No. <laughs> when we were living in that tiny, tiny house, and I had to sleep in the closet. Mm-hmm. Oh, what? That time period. Wait. What are you fucking talking about? Calm the fuck down, Harry Potter. You never slept in a closet. <laughs> yeah, I did. He slept under the stairs. <laughs> what are you talking you about? You, do you have a... Do you oh, have, wait. You guys don't... Uh, do you have a lighting bolt on your forehead? I like how you say had to and then said, you guys don't know about this. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Uh, 
when we used to have the Xbox and cable in our room at that tiny, tiny house when Jalen first came. Yeah. I used to move that all into the closet, sleep in there, and just watch at, at movies and cartoons and play games till like 4 a.m. in the morning. First of all, asshole, that was not a tiny house. That was a two-bedroom townhouse, okay? <laughs> Uh, well, it's the tiniest house. And I've we turned it into a four bedroom in. because we used the fucking living room and the friggin' yeah. garage as bedrooms. But yeah, I, I just remember that because I keep on remembering those smokes, uh, smoking ads, how they're dangerous and they showed a weird alien. Okay, Paula has another question, and it's for, for me. Uh, she says, Are there monsters in other cultures such as Native American or Native Canadian that us plain folks don't have in our culture? Yes. So, yes. Uh, I, Paula, first of all, I'm going to say I normally don't like to answer these because I'm a non reservation native. Um, He's an imposter. I am not an imposter. <laughs> I just didn't live on the rest. But um, this one I do know a little bit about. And yes, we do. Um, one of the biggest ones is the Wendigo. Yeah. Or the skin. Unless you're from Australia, then we've decided on S4 that it's called the Wendigo. <laughs> That's what we call it, the so, Wendigo. Wendigo. Or a skin. There are, in all kinds of cultures, not just like Native American, but in like Russian culture. And oh my God, look at the Japanese culture. Kay. They've got all kinds of... Nothing. You're Bobby just you know, like you're you're yeah. the guy at a Black Lives Matter that stands up and says all lives matter. Oh <laughs> my God, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> what I'm saying is there's ones that average everyday people have never heard of. Okay, unless you are part of that culture. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people that have heard a story about, let's say, like a skinwalker or a wendigo, right? Mm -hmm. But there are other creatures that are not actually talked about off of the air, that right. area. Right, and, and we'll you never know? hear about them. Yeah. You're wrong. What? Disney has heard about every one of them, and they've got movies for years coming out about them. <laughs> yeah, probably. Friend, yep. look at the friggin' India has the gin. Mm -hmm. They make Aladdin and Genie. Mm -hmm. Friend, natives have the Wendigo. Fern. They, put they make brother bear. Yeah. Skin they make Fern others. Golly. Fern. Well, Baba Yaga is Russian. Yeah. But you, you, you still heard about Baba Yaga. You still see that through uh, a lore. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a secret. Um, well, uh, anything. Well, it'll be, it's so, and this is the thing is that a lot of these used to be strictly cultural mm -hmm. based off of where you lived based off right. of what culture you were part of, all of that kind of stuff. And it's, it's when... It's, it's not even entirely cultural. So <laughs> you can have a, a, a continent. You, uh, mm -hmm. Look at, okay, so we got Japan. And you're going to have the lore of the entire country, but this little community over here, or this little part of Japan, has their own lore as well. Mm -hmm. That you will never hear about. Well, and that's what I said um, is that things used to be segregated and cultural based off of the area that you were from. And if you weren't from this village or you weren't from this, you never right. heard these stories. The reason you never hear about the Japanese lore is because the moment someone from Japan starts telling you, the kid from the grudge comes out and kills you. Right? I mean, no <laughs> shit. And, no shit. But, no, the, uh, but the biggest issue with that now, though, mm -hmm. is with how connected we all are with the internet, with everything yes else. Yes no. Because if it was written down, absolutely. But like in Native American lore, a lot of it was oral tradition that you might not ever hear about it. There is a lot of oral tradition, and there's a lot of oral tradition in a Whoa. lot of different cultures. Whoa. But Let, let's calm down on the oral talk. <laughs> <laughs> but even the oral, oral traditions from a lot of them mm -hmm. are now part of different people's YouTube channels, or they're part of, like, they are not held as secret anymore as they used to be. Okay, I remember a show we did a while back. A, a, a few years ago, that we were, we were talking about, for example, the Upper Skagit tribe, that we couldn't talk about anything of that because yes, no, I'm there a are, white man. I'm not allowed are, to talk about that. Native. That's for sure. There still right. are, but what I'm saying is there aren't 
anywhere near as many mm -hmm. as there used to be where people haven't actually heard about this. Because... I still think there's stories that you will ever hear. Hmm. The only reason there's not as many <laughs> as there used to be is because those tribes have died out. Yep. You killed us. Therefore, their dogs. stories died out. What? Yep. Yeah, you gave us blankets and you <laughs> oh, gave us a ton of diseases. <laughs> I didn't give you any blanket. Wow, yeah, well, dickheads, you just let us freeze? Yeah. How rude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. We are for you land and trade. And I pretty mm -hmm. much give you a blanket like at least once a year. Okay, well, we never offered them land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they kind of just took it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But, no, and, and even if they hadn't died out, uh, I, I think the, the reservations are way more... Reserved? <laughs> uh, able to keep a secret than the government is. Just saying. <laughs> when it comes to lore. Okay, yes. The government That's what just kind of about. kills off anyone who knows it. When it comes to important secrets, they're actually pretty good at it, the government. Mm -hmm. Like, friend. Like, nobody believed in aliens until last year when the government said, hey, guess what? They're that real. was this year. No, oh, my bad. <laughs> friend. Well, no, but like. Okay. If the native people want to keep a secret, they're not going to kill off the first person to say, hey, I know something. Friend. The government will. Right. <laughs> But that raises people's eyes when the government does that, therefore they start looking into it harder. Mm -hmm. Eventually that has to come out. That doesn't mean they're not good at keeping secrets. It means they're going about it the wrong way, that's all. Mm -hmm. Friend, but... In some tribes, there is a special way to do it. And it's the fact that only one person within the tribe actually knows everything. Knows all the story. You're the medicine man, wouldn't it? No. Depends on who, like what, it depends on the tribe and everything. But okay. some of them, they only give parts of the story <coughs> to each family. That way not everyone has... to get out. Yeah. Friend. And it's been the easiest way to keep everything. Friend, and it also makes it so that your stories are more meaningful. Because there would be special events that would come up where they would tell the stories. Mm -hmm. Or you got like your story beads that yeah. will tell the story, but only if you know how to read them. And only people within the tribe know how to read those beads. Yeah. So, the, the point is, yes, there probably is lore that the public <coughs> that the average man. everyday people wouldn't know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But Wendigo I mean, Wendigo came that's out with Supernatural. I don't know. I can't remember if they did a movie about the Wendigo specifically, but I know it came out with Supernatural. Yes. Well, and you know, yes, and we talk about that as like Native American or whatever, but it's not just. So there are plenty of lures from like Ireland mm -hmm. and different places like that that people that are not from that specific area oh, yeah. aren't going to hear yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah, Ireland has a lot of things that sure. people don't hear about. Ireland and Scotland both, but then there are also there is lore that that comes from both Ireland and Scotland that affected both of them. Mm -hmm. Whereas you got Ireland specific and Scotland specific. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I looked at Ireland a lot in my younger years because I thought our ancestors came from Ireland come to find out it didn't it came from Scotland so <laughs> well and well uh, I mean something as simple as the story of the standing stones depending on right. what part you're in and which stones yeah. are completely different than well, what you would think and also who was around because like the yeah. Scottish are very heavily influenced by the Vikings the Irish aren't as influenced with them no Friend. Yeah. yeah, well, um... The English were just bombarded by them. <laughs> right. Ireland, I... Well, and they curious. have more elementals in Ireland as well. I'm just curious if there's a... an affinity for Ireland. I yeah, really they, like they were able Irish to keep Lord. more of yeah. their traditions yeah. their own. 
I'm just curious awesome. if there's a Burke Castle somewhere that I can go live in. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> like there is one. There is a castle that you can take over, but you have to be willing to be the king. <laughs> what are we fucking waiting for? Let's go, no, friend. I'm good. You can be my vice president. Now, one vice of my king. favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite legends. And this is from Scotland and Ireland because mm-hmm. it's a causeway in between. Is is the Giant's Causeway? Hmm. A. Uh, and it's a story where... about the love of a giant for another giant, and they built a bridge in between. Oh, uh, okay. So that they could meet each other. Yeah. And oh. it is one of the coolest myths. Then you're going to talk about the one where the, the, the one giant, actually there's a question whether he was a god or not, um, wanted to defeat a giant from another, uh, I, I don't think he was Irish, and so he his wife turned him into a baby and invited the other giant to the house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she made pancakes and put iron in the pancakes. And absolutely, Paul, there can be some crossovers. Um <clears throat> There are entities out there that two races or cultures do believe in, but mm-hmm. it, it's a very different for each of them. Um, and that's where you have name changes. Yeah. Same description, but it's called something mm-hmm. different. Not well, it's like Bigfoot. Um, big yeah, it goes by like 400 different names. Yeah. Which yeah, is it's a really Bigfoot. good example. Bigfoot. I thought she said bitch light for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> So, and honestly, uh, we call him Bigfoot, but I believe Sasquatch is the Native American name for him. What yeah, is well, Sasquatch? but other, other states Depends have, like, other states, even sometimes counties, have different names for Bigfoot. Yeah. Skunk Ape, Yahweh, uh, like, yeah, there's, really there's, there's all different kinds of names for Bigfoot. Not Yeti. Yahweh, Yahweh. <laughs> Yahweh. I mean, in is Japan, Haiti. they say Yeti. <laughs> Uh huh. Right? In like Russia, yeah. they say Yeti. I can't remember where I read this, but the giant causeway thing, Brian, it might have been a joke. <laughs> I don't know. Probably a joke. But it was a crossover story again, just where the Scottish giant met an English leprechaun. That's how humans were made. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> oh. Brian. Ow. Could be true. You never know. Well, if you actually. Think about it. It'd be awkward. If you look at like the story of humans, um, that kind of makes sense because it would have been like the Neanderthal and the uh, oh god. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Goat? I'm sorry. No, <laughs> never mind. That's how Satan was made. <clears throat> Satan was made with a goat and a Neanderthal. Yes. Oh man. No, that's a dude. That's a Jersey Devil. <laughs> hey, Rick. Yes. Ricky, what do you get if you cross yeah. human DNA and no goat DNA? What DNA? You cut. You cut out. Human DNA and goat DNA. Goat. Uh, a, a, a pissed no out goat. Kicked out of the fucking petting zoo. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was going to say a pissed off goat. But, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> a goat with a gun. I mean, there are a lot of things to be said for the Middle East, and one thing they always said was the goats looked happy. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, that's Montana. Well, that's actually uh, interesting. There's different names for. <laughs> that's big horn sheep. Ghosts. Oh, and okay. Even God. In different cultures, absolutely. Uh-huh. For an, um, paranormal, they're always mentioning it, so it's kind of interesting. On like paranormal caught on camera, especially they're saying stuff like that. Like I am very much of the belief that God is just God. They are all the same. Um, whether you mm-hmm. call him Allah or whether you call him Yahweh, whether you call him for yeah. the gods, they're all the same thing. Yeah, friend, they are our creator. I believe the same. Um, 
And in each culture, there is truly a belief that at some point or other, they don't care about us. And that could be true, too. Friend, who knows? Okay. I mean, well, but like, look at the Catholic and Christian God. Friend, he got done with us, and he's like, I'm going to just flood you out, screw it. Friend, and then he felt bad about it, so he saved one family. Oh, and, and, and then made them have sex. That was the worst part. Oh, no, no, no. Can anybody else hear me? He put up a yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. I, I, something's weird. I've been cut out, or I can't hear anybody. Huh. Oh, sorry. Can, can you hear us right now? Rick? Rick. 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 Come back, Rick. Rick. Oh, no. Oh, no. Rick is gone. Knife in the Discord. Yeah. Uh, Rick, you back? So, yeah, I'm here. I'm okay. back. Oh, there we go. go. Sorry. Hmm. It's just fucking Skype. That's all it's it is. Just, no, it's the aliens. The aliens are pissed off. <laughs> This so, always happens every time we start talking there, about God. There, there's something flying around, so, yeah. <laughs> We're not allowed to do that, huh? Well, no. he was like, no pictures, no pictures. Real life yeah. zombies. Oh, I love that question. Uh, so, uh, the history of zombies actually goes back to Africa. Um, with voodoo. Uh, and oh, okay. there's actual, there's herbs. They're not actually dead. But there's herbs and there's uh, d different rituals they do that slow them down enough to where you think they're dead, but they're really not. Apparently, we all go back to Africa, though. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, out of all the continents, it's the only one that didn't move. <sighs> True. So all of us are from Africa in the in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're from Pangea. Oh, what's what's interesting? So it was actually uh, the, left the the movie industry that that brought the uh, the whole. Uh, if you if you look at most of the zombie movies now, they're uh, uh, virus related. <coughs> um, Guarantee you that won't happen again. No. Fuck no. <laughs> they, they can't do that anymore. After COVID? Yeah, there is no way they can continue making those type of shows. Right. Friend. And if you look at it, they haven't. Look at the new one that they just brought out. Yeah, uh, it was fungus now. Yeah. It's not virus. <laughs> it's What's the game, John? What? The one that's based on Mushroom video zombies. Game. Oh, With yeah, the guy yeah. and the child. Uh, you know I know what it's remember. called? No, I know what game. Light it's not yet. dying light. Um, yeah. Rick, do you know which game I'm talking about? Uh, the Last of Us. Yes. Yes. There we go. Friend, it's a game. That is the first new zombie movie since COVID. Yes, it's oh, the video. Yeah, game. and they're okay. mushroom zombies. It's because of a fungus, not because of a virus. Yeah. Uh, I still say the most accurate. I think one uh, is World War Z. Uh, I, I like I like how they portray World War Z. You know, okay, so I've always thought about zombies, okay, mm -hmm. as being a possibility, but only, okay, now this is, sounds really fucking weird, but not like dying and coming back to life, okay, but as a type of a virus, mm -hmm. but I think that it would be like if somebody could actually live through rabies Ooh. it would be what was left after there's three there's three people in the world who have actually survived rabies mm -hmm. seriously yes yeah that i had full blown case of rabies and never got it treated but survived it huh now mm -hmm. here's the thing we can't like all the time we have events that cause zombies to have to change we can no longer have a Night of the Living Dead zombie <coughs> movie. <coughs> no, they've always got it. Would be too boring. It's not, it, no, it's no longer believable. If a zombie came out of the grave, he'd look around for ten minutes and say, no, this is too fucked up, I'm going back. <laughs> for <end> people. <laughs> they couldn't handle this. 
Not only that, but if you think about no, modern weaponry. Yeah. Okay. One of the old school zombies that goes at like zero miles per hour and goes uh, towards you. It, nobody would be scared of them anymore because it cripples would. All you'd have to do is shoot yeah. them. Mm-hmm. Like it, it wouldn't be. It's not like every other person doesn't own a weapon that would be able to take out a whole herd of these things before they got close enough to right. do anything to you. So they had to give them something else, a bigger edge, like more speed, more this, mm-hmm. more strength, well, more... like the last um, Zombieland. They were alpha zombies and they could run. Mm-hmm. Um, the ones in World War Z, they like, weren't slow. My favorite is still neither of those. Which one? I Am Legend. Oh, God, yeah. I don't I, think of those as zombies. Time. I think of they those were. as vampires. I think well, they were a cross. That's okay, you can be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, uh, I, they, were, they were smart. Thank you. Yeah. They developed. Yeah. Their brains developed because if you notice, uh, they just ran and they ate whatever. And then they set a trap and they trapped him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that showed a developing intelligence. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do think that was... A cross, maybe? Well, I think there's a, a lot of crossover zombie? between zombies and vampires in the first place because they're both undead mm-hmm. and they have, they're in like family groupings and like there's a lot of <laughs> the two but lures. That's that the thing. We've had crossover. zombie movies before that too where zombies couldn't come out during the day. Yeah. Because they, only they be were out powered at night. by the moon. And that actually. Is somewhat realistic when you think about it. So, like, like, yes, they do get some of their traits from um, vampires, but they also get some of their traits then from werewolves or mummies mm-hmm. or mummies. Yeah. like it, they they pull from everything. But the original reason we have the zombie lore is not from Africa. Where are you from then? It is from America. It, it, it is. Partly uh, voodoo, but the fact of the the actual zombie, where the first zombie movie came from, was the fact that a statistic came out from the U.S. government okay. that for one year in the 1800s, we buried more people alive than we did dead. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's why. That's why they made the bell. That's well, why yeah, we the, the zombie bells. bells. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, friend. It is. And now we just have bath salts. The first Living Dead movie. Mm-hmm. That's what he based it off of. Was that statistic? Okay. Okay. And right. yeah, it was revenge. That's what they were coming back for. Oh yeah, you fuckers buried us alive, friend. It happens. Mm-hmm. I mean, it still happens. Weirdly enough, not really, not that much. We, not as we much. Burn the yeah, but, but now they don't have a bell. More than you'd think, but not as much here. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Like, <clears throat> but now they don't have a bell. Yeah, they're just kind of fucked. Well, well I mean, yeah, after the whole the embalming like, process, I'm pretty sure that they were dead <laughs> by the time they ended up in that coffin. Well, once they got but, embalmed. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yep. Now we have yep. like embalming and everything else. Like you're not gonna really bury somebody. Okay, I know the next zombie movie. What's that? Friend, Embalm? have you guys seen the new thing where you can get your entire body put into the roots of a tree? Uh huh. Yeah. They yeah. pop out up into the tree and become the tree, and now you've got zombie speaking, trees. Speaking of that, did you guys happen to see? There was a, a story out of Colorado. Where that same sort of thing, where this this funeral home does these green funerals, and you're put back in, yeah. Except they weren't. Yeah. Green, that all the bodies were just piling up in the funeral. No and way. Mm-hmm. It was actually on Shark Tank the other day. It's really gross. Yes. Ew. Ew. Yeah. It's really gross. They put them in these like cardboard boxes, and they have like 80, bo- 80 bodies a month. 
and your yep. body is supposed to um, decompose in that month, and they turn you into compost. It mm -hmm. is really gross, and they were it talking about you know, what you could eat from though. that soil. It makes right. sense, though. Like, if you actually think about the circle of life and what we're actually supposed to yeah. have happen versus what happens now that we did bomb turn back and all that crap, it's from the soil to the soil. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, it makes sense, but it is kind of nasty mm -hmm. when you think about just, yeah. like, a whole bunch of humans laying in a pile decomposing. Well, but yeah. in this well, in, in, in New the, York here talking, about three years ago. Yeah, hmm. uh, they actually weren't making compost out of them other than they were just piling them up in the funeral home. They weren't hmm. putting them in a compost pile or doing anything they were supposed to be doing. Leak. I mean, it doesn't surprise me, sadly. Yeah. Well, I mean, we have body farms all over the place. But this wasn't <laughs> supposed to be a body farm. Yeah, it was supposed to just be a... But those are called plantations, and those are illegal now. Oh my god! <laughs> no, I mean like there yeah, are the body farm. farms though all over the place where they watch decomposure and decomposing rates, and oh, they yeah. train cadaver dogs and all of that kind of stuff at these different body farms. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! I've never heard of this. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. That, it's been done for a while. It's a um, forensics. Stuff. Yeah, so, so yeah, when uh, you can donate yeah. your body to the science. the science of a body farm, yeah. and they'll take it and they'll put it out in a field, and then watch decomposure rates, figure out uh, different elements and how things affect mm -hmm. different bodies, so that they can uh, mm -hmm. sort of they do it else. for forensics and for the dogs and mm -hmm. for all that stuff. Yeah. To make sure that when they do find like a dead body in the woods or something, they can date the amount of time that it's been there, the amount of exposure that it's had based off of the area, all of that crap. That's how we know, hey, this person died four days ago at this approximate time. And before this, that, body they farms. just did uh, well, grave robbing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That was uh, that was a whole big thing back in the eighteen hundreds with uh, but yeah, science. I think there's over like 200 body farms in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, ready. I don't know, I do know that part of my tribe's tradition for um, death is the fact that we cut off a tree at about six feet and the body is laid onto the stump of the tree. Okay. And supposedly all manners of animals will come and eat from the body taking it back into the earth mm -hmm. and not just carnivores deer squirrels everything hmm. so we're no longer allowed to do that why it's illegal In Canada or here? <coughs> Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. I would think. Honestly, that should be considered a religious thing. Throwing ashes in some places is considered illegal now. Huh? Throwing ashes? Yeah. Like, tossing ashes is considered illegal in some areas. Yeah. There's a lot of things to do with a dead body that are massively illegal. And they're weird things. Like, right. I... Like, you wouldn't think that that would be illegal. There's no. a lot of that. It, it's been done for hundreds and yeah. hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. Didn't affect nothing back then. What's it going to do now? Well, okay, so another issue with that, though, nowadays is, let's say you were to take a human and put them out on a stump like you were talking about and letting the animals and let them decompose there and everything, mm -hmm. right? Well... So let's say a random dog that's passing by or something takes one of the arms, okay? Yeah, but I really doubt they're doing it in the backyard, are they? Uh, okay. Yeah, kind I of. Mean, I mean, but you gotta remember back when we did this, our backyard there weren't any houses. Yeah, and like mm -hmm. the, so that's the best what I'm way saying I can is bring that, that now up you is, have a kid down the road that found a severed dead person arm. 
laying with his dog. Like, he, it, there's reasons behind this stuff. In the prequel to the show Yellowstone, which is 1884 mm-hmm. or 87 or something, they did a thing where the native tribes actually came on to the Dutton Ranch. Okay. And they were hanging out in the back 40. And the Duttons actually came up and asked him, what are you doing here? And he said, do you own this land? And he said, yes, I do. Hmm. He said, it used to be our land. Mm -hmm. And he said, my father used to play here as a child. It was his favorite area. This is where we'd like to lay him to rest. He said, so you want to bury him here? He said, well, I'd actually like to put him in that tree. But the problem is, you sell this land, or this land is taken from you. Someone cuts down that tree. He's no longer at rest. Right. Yeah. The tree, when they do do it with the stump, that's why they go up to six feet. It will still grow. Okay. So the body is always at rest. We'd no longer be at rest. Hey, I want... We should answer that one. And leave All right, final panel question. Many monsters <laughs> represent parts of human nature in an exaggerated way. What monster do each of you identify with as representing your human life experience? Example, I identify and feel kinship with Frankenstein due to my experience as an autistic person who always feels so wildly different from everyone else and misunderstood. Yes, and I said the librarian in Ghostbusters because um, I'm an author and I would be really annoyed if I kept saying be quiet and then you know, they didn't listen, so I might just do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so Rosella is a class three ghost. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh I'm going to say zombie. Because I fucking feel like one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, well, I wouldn't I would go zombie, but I'm going to say vampire, and I'm sure Paula would agree with me. Just because I'm a creature of the night. I mean, I stay up all night and sleep during... So, yeah. I do not bite your neck. Hush. Thank <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. All right, I need the panel's help on this one. Yeah. Name a monster that is a complete fucking asshole. An uh, ogre. An ogre. Well, a donkey. A uh, and, and John's donkey. A donkey. Get me a coffee. Does that count? Beetles. That's actually a good one. I'm a cat. You're a cat. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I agree with that. Well, I I, I guess the um, the the main demon in um, the Exorcist was an asshole, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I never saw the movie. That's Astaroth, isn't it? (laughs) Friend. Yeah, I think so. Astaroth was the demon. So you're Astaroth. Yeah, well, <laughs> there are a lot of people in that know me that would say that's not true, yeah. <laughs> but it absolutely absolutely is. Yeah. Friend, no, yeah. I can tell you, it's probably the person in this world that knows him the best. He's a yeah. complete fucking asshole. He's Shrek. Yeah. I, he has a, he's <laughs> Shrek. He has a hey, lot Cole, of layers. Hey Cole, I want to see you uh, crawl upside down on the ceiling. <laughs> Don't I do told that. You later. Get a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> now, mom, what's yours? Mine? I have no idea. I gotta be honest. I don't know what Dad, movie what monster you think or what monster it would best. Mothman. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I would have to say the Wolfman, like werewolf. You know, actually, no. I I will tell you exactly <sighs> the one that I. Feel like the most is probably Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Same thing. But for yeah. the Same reason. Yeah, friend. Yeah, I, I I would have to say yeah, same thing. Like it, it's the it, it's the same reason that I gave uh, Werewolf is why you gave Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Mm-hmm. Friend. Um, yeah, I would have to say so because I I am I can be completely two separated people. Like 
I can either be a really like nice. They, they call that person, a dual personality disorder today, or a complete fucking <laughs> asshole, depending on who it is I'm talking to and how I feel at the moment. Oh. So yeah, I'd have to see Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde. Ooh, ooh, an AI poem. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you check out the Discord the next the, the next week and check out the poem that uh, Paula just sent to the AI and had them write for. Her. Yeah. Paula, you're helping Skynet. Quit it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I did want to say before we go, I am actually a featured guest on From the Shadows podcast. Um, so it was really kind of fun to film that the other day um, with them, and it's going to be on YouTube as well on Halloween. So if you want to get really freaked out about the experiences that I've ever had, um, get on there, and they're going to actually have me back soon because I – had so many stories to tell they're having me back so it'll be fun cool. that's right ladies and gentlemen make sure you listen to www.fromtheshadowspodcast.com <coughs> and listen to Rosella on there on Halloween night or Halloween day for an, Thanks. Um, check out their website or check out their YouTube so make sure you get on there alright ladies and gentlemen it is 12 o'clock it is past our freaking bedtime friend. so thank you very much for listening panel thank you very much for being on tonight yeah our next show is next Wednesday, and we are doing the uh, witch. the history of the witch. For an, um, not like Eric's personal history, <laughs> but <laughs> <for> an, <laughs> 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 just the history in general. So join us for that, and that will be our Halloween show. And then the next show is actually the Day of the Dead. Let's go. Mm-hmm. So Ooh. I think we are going to have to concentrate on some Mexican things. Mm-hmm. Come on, we're cool. this. Oh, not right. just Mexican, Aztec, too. Mm-hmm. Friend, yeah. Well, Man. South American. Yeah. Central American and yeah. part of North American, because they're, yeah, yeah. Fuck, yeah. that's all confusing. But, anyways, thank you very much for joining us here on the S4 Paranormal Bunker. Have a great week, and we will see you next time. Woohoo! Bye. 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 Data transfer complete. System malfunction. Please evacuate immediately. Program terminated. Son of a biscuit eater.